Let's continue in worship.
children and the offering. Uh, yesterday I was reading in Ephesians and Ephesians 6, 4 says something along the lines of fathers do not provoke your children to anger. Um, and based on the morning we've had today, I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> like, <laughs> fathers don't provoke your children to anger. Um, but the other, uh, way. <laughs> the other way around, right, Paul, are you sure? Um, but it, it got me thinking how I, I think what that verse is trying to say is um, provide a, an environment uh, of peace discipline, but of peace, of nurturing in your home. Um, other versions say, do not exasperate uh, your children. So I just want to pray over the teachers. Um, they're, they're incredible. I don't know if you have children here in the, uh, in the schools, but the, ch the teachers are just full of so much nurturing and so much patience, um, and I just want to pray over them. So Father, in Yeshua's name, um, I lift up the teachers that are going to be uh, watching over the children I pray that uh, they would provide that environment that does not provoke the children to anger or exasperation, uh, that there would just be a feeling of peace in the room, and Lord, that you would be there with the kids, with the teachers, um, and that they would hear from you, Father, and they would just rest in your word, and you would speak in their language in a way that they would understand. Um, I'm also going to pray over the, the offering, and again, part of the the, the teaching, I, I'm not sure if you know, but the children also tithe in their little classrooms, and it's it's so incredible to see, um, mostly because they, they have no concept of money, um, and they think, okay, I give this shekel, that means I still have the shekel in my wallet at home, um, and I just think that's so beautiful, that, that faith, uh, that they will be provided for, and that generosity is, um, is not conditional, so I, I want to pray that over us as well, um, Lord, I, I ask that that we would have the faith uh, in your provision as <coughs> these little kids do, and that they just think, you know, and they believe that that shekel they gave, that's still the same shekel that's in their wallet, and, and I ask that you would give us that same faith, um, and that practically you, you would also provide that for us, that we would not need to worry about that shekel, or for us it's a bit more uh, um, in our wallets, and that we, we just know that you'll take care of us, Father, Amen. And, and that we would have the faith to be as generous as these little Amen. 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 What the kids are dismissed, so <laughs> what what ages? All all, of them, all, of all them. kids. All, all kids. Except the big kids. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, as the kids uh, go down to their classroom, we're just gonna continue in worship here. Make sure there's no accidents happening in the back there. Are we good? <laughs> All right, let's sing. Ek 
As I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, many of us around the, the world are celebrating the birth of the Messiah this weekend. And while we, you know, when I get to heaven, I want to find out exactly what day he was born. Probably not this one, but who knows. But uh, hundreds of years before he came, the prophet Isaiah foresaw it coming, foresaw that day. And, and uh, I think foresaw the day that we live in as well. And so the next song we're going to sing um, is another new one. Uh, I don't know if you've seen it before or heard of it, but uh, it's called Glory, and it's called Let There Be Peace. So just reading from Isaiah chapter 9, the prophet Isaiah wrote, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, 
And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. And so that idea of, of peace uh, is something we've thought a lot about the last couple of months here <laughs> in this land, right? And uh, so as we just sing and worship the Prince of Peace who came, uh, we just, uh, may we be part of that solution, right? May we bring peace uh, in our relationships and, and uh, everywhere that we go. So let's, let's sing this together. start in me. Amen. 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 Can we sing the Shema? Stefan, can you lead us in that? Shema Israel
You may be seated. Good morning. My name is Susan, and I will be reading the Bible verses today. First, I will read from Genesis chapter 45, verses 4 through 10. So Joseph said to his brothers, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near. And he said, I am your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are yet five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God, and he has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Make haste and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not tarry. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me and your children and your children's children. Today's Haftarah portion is from the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 21 through 22, 24 through 27. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will take the people of Israel from the nations among which they have gone, and will gather them from all sides and bring them to their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king over them all. And they shall be no longer two nations and no longer divided into two kingdoms. My servant David shall be king over them, and they shall all have one shepherd. They shall follow my ordinances and be careful to observe my statutes. They shall dwell in the land where your fathers dwelt that I gave to my servant Jacob. And their children, they and their children and their children's children shall dwell there forever. And David, my servant, shall be their prince forever. I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them, and I will bless them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. My dwelling place shall be with them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Then the nations will know that I, the Lord, sanctify Israel, when my sanctuary is in the midst of them forevermore. Okay. And because we believe that Yeshua is our Lord and Savior, I am also reading a portion from the New Testament. Today it's from Matthew chapter 1. Verses 18 to 23. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child of the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to send her away quietly. But as he considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Yeshua, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel which means God with us. Parola di Dio. Thank you so much, Susan. And good morning. Or cold morning or rainy morning. I hope you uh, have at least a, a warm and dry home, especially. Uh, we actually had a little bit of a waterfall last night at around uh, midnight in our bedroom where... Uh, all of a sudden, Shalim woke up and said, like, I hear water running. <laughs> so, um, 
yeah, anyway, uh, so that was a fun experience. Um, hey, I, I want to give a special shout out uh, to Wilbur and to Cheeky uh, as well. Uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, thank you for leading worship, Wilbur. Thank you for coming here to Herzliya basically every Saturday uh, faithfully. I'm not sure if you know, but they actually live in Jerusalem. So they come all the way here. Uh, and today, uh, I'm, I'm saying that I'm emphasizing it today because they're really leaving in the next few minutes again. Uh, after leading us in worship and dropping off cookies uh, for the kids. Uh, but they have another commitment tonight uh, for which they have to get ready for. So thank you guys. And yes, once in a while we'll, we'll give you a hand uh, as well. Uh, I want to say thank you to Stefan as well. Uh, and uh, yes, give him a hand. And uh, we pray for you and for the other soldiers as well. And we just, yeah, we, we are in touch some of us are in touch with you, uh, and when we see you, we want to publicly also, and, but also personally, just say thank you uh, for your hard work, for your service, uh, and everybody you're representing. Uh, yeah, so thank you. We appreciate that. And thank you, Sun Young, for jumping in. Where is he? Thank you for... Uh, he just has a servant heart and jumps in wherever... Whether it's driving, whether it's piano, uh, whatever it is that uh, need, needs to be done. It's just wonderful to have a wonderful team. Thank you, Samuel. Thank you, the creators. Thank you, everyone who just, I can maybe sum that up at the end of the year. Uh, just everyone who, who makes this home uh, for all of us, for believers, uh, also unbelievers as well, just who come in here and f feel welcome. This is, uh, yeah, this is your, your work. And uh, it's wonderful to do this together as a team, as a family as well. So a big thank you to everyone uh, who is just part of this and, and makes this happen and makes this work and, bless, be, and is a blessing here to uh, this city and to this area, this region. Um, just so you know where they're heading, I don't want to um, hold back any information if somebody's interested because it's, for some it's a special event. Tonight, King of Kings Community Jerusalem, uh, they're organizing uh, a caroling event uh, outside of Jerusalem, uh, overlooking uh, Bethlehem, uh, if you will. So, it's, uh, uh, if you know Jerusalem a little bit, um, maybe you know Ramat Rachel, it's a, uh, it's a hotel compound, it's somewhere there. If you're interested, I can send you the little bit of information that I have, uh, or you get directly in touch with uh, Cheeky and Wilbur Cheeky, um, who has probably the, the detailed information. Uh, I think it's today at 4.30, 5 o'clock. Um, and then with that, I also want to invite you uh, to our special uh, Christmas Eve worship service tomorrow, okay, Sunday, tomorrow, 5 p.m. Um, and really the idea and, and the vision is to, to celebrate, not celebrate Christmas, but celebrate Yeshua. And this is what we are, are celebrating during this time. But also, actually, somebody just said the other day again, Christmas should be every day. We should be celebrating Yeshua every single day. And uh, just tomorrow, we want to um, take uh, some of these maybe more season, seasonal songs, Christmas songs, but worship songs, and, and worship Yeshua uh, during that time. Um, it's not going to be uh, with the sermon. We're going to read uh, through some scripture together and, and be in worship for, for an hour. And just want to invite you uh, for that. I think it's going to be uh, a beautiful time and a very unique time uh, with two Daniels on uh, the worship team. And hopefully Sonia is going to recover uh, quickly. So uh, it should be fun. So uh, we are in a... Uh, sermon series called In the Waiting, and uh, today uh, we're going to go through some of the, the stories around uh, Christmas, or not even Christmas, but the birth of Yeshua. Uh, we're going to jump a little bit. Um, my dad is here, yes, uh, right there uh, in the back, so welcome to you and to my mom as well, uh, but he asked me, so what are you preaching on? 
Uh, and I was like, well, uh, a little bit about like the birth uh, of Yeshua, but we're going to be jumping around. So this is how much I can summarize it, okay? Uh, you can summarize it uh, later, uh, hopefully a little bit better. Um, I want to say thank you to, for Tolik, and it's a lot of thank yous uh, today. Uh, thank you for to, to Tolik and Masha for opening your home uh, for community group. Uh, we are meeting at, at your place uh, every week, uh, and I get to join last Wednesday, and it's a wonderful group. And I had a little bit in mind where I'm going to go with this sermon, but uh, the final revelation uh, was one sentence that Tolik actually said. Um, and if I don't forget, I'll, I'll say the sentence later. Uh, but it finally came into place that night and was like, oh, okay, this is uh, what, it is, what it's going to be. So you can open up your Bible and we're going to be starting uh, with our first scripture in Luke chapter 1. And going to be starting uh, at verse 28, and as you make your way there, I'm going to pray. God, we, we thank you for this. Uh, we thank you for the rain. We thank you for, even if it's a storm, um, but it's so much needed. And here in Israel, we call it a blessing uh, to receive the rain because we know it's life-giving, maybe more life-giving here than in other parts of the world where we're from, but here in Israel, it's so needed that we, we fill uh, our tanks, uh, the nature is being able to take it all in for, for a long uh, summer. So we thank you for your blessings. At the same time, we also know that if it rains here, it's very likely to rain uh, in the south, in the north, uh, where so many soldiers are serving right now. So we pray for them, not only because it rains, but it's a habit that we kind of have during, especially during this time where we pray over our soldiers who are serving, everybody else in the medical field, everybody who is serving during this uh, war in the north and the south. And we, we pray over them, pray that you would protect them, that you would be with them, that you would guide them, that you would even warn them if, as, if they're getting into uh, a trap or, or something that they don't foresee. So. We pray over them and we, we pray for their families, um, for, for, any, for any soldiers, pray that you would comfort them, but also especially those who got hurt or even lost a family member. God, we pray for your comfort, that you would yeah, be just so present during this time and even reveal yourself uh, to those people. God, we pray. Uh, for this time, and we thank you that we get to meet together here uh, this morning. God, we thank you uh, that we get to celebrate your son, Yeshua, every single day. But during that season, we, we may be focusing a little bit more on it or focusing on, on Yeshua coming as a human into this world. And God, we... Yeah, we, we pray that you would bless this time, that you would reveal your word to us. In Yeshua's name, amen. So, in the waiting, and as, you're, as you, maybe you're waiting, uh, you're not just waiting there around, but uh, you're, you're, you're typically expecting something while you wait. There, there's something you're, you're looking forward to as you're waiting, you're... Maybe you're afraid of something coming, so it could go both ways. Uh, but typically, as you wait, there, there's a future as well, and uh, we, we, we think typically, what, what's, what's going on? What's going, in, what's, what's going on in the future? And today, we're going to look at expectations. And some of the people... I would even say many of the people, if not all the people back in the time of, of Luke 1. We're going to jump into this, ver into this little story where uh, the angel comes to, to Mary or Miriam and has this wonderful promise uh, to her that she's uh, giving birth to the Messiah. We're going to look at some others where I, I think we can see that they were expecting something to happen. They knew the scripture, 
they, they, they knew uh, the words of the prophets, they knew something is going to happen at some point. And my point with the first few people here is to show a little bit uh, that this expectation was there. So let's, let's see this in, in the story of Mary here, uh, where the angel says, rejoice. This is verse 28. Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she, so Mary, saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting this was. Well, strange. Um, then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call him his name Yeshua. He will be great, and he will be called the son of the highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I do not know a man? So, my point here is, the angel appears to Mary, gives her this promise, says, you're going to conceive a child, uh, it's not going to be any ordinary child, it's actually going to be uh, the promised Messiah. And her concern is, how is this possible? I haven't, I'm not married. I don't have a relationship with a man. That's her concern. So my point here is she wasn't too surprised that the Messiah is coming. That wasn't like, oh, who is that Messiah? Who is that Yeshua? Uh, what's going on? Tell me about it. Her concern was uh, how, how, like the natural thing. How, how should this happen? My thought here is that she knew at some, like she knew the prophets. At some point, the Messiah will come. She learned this in, well, with her parents as they brought her up, uh, in maybe even in, in synagogue, whatever they studied. Uh, but it was present. So she was expecting something like others did as well. If we, if we jump uh, to, to the shepherds in Luke, just one chapter in Luke, uh, chapter 2, verse 10 and following, the angel comes to the shepherds and he says, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings and great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was uh, with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and praising glory to God in the highest and to earth, peace, goodwill toward men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. So also here, it's like, huh, the Messiah, strange. What, what is that? Also kind of same mindset. It's like, okay, um, we probably knew this is going to happen at some point. It's happening. Let's see what's happening with a little bit more excitement. Okay, so everybody knows I'm not the most exciting person. I'm pretty steady, um, even when this is something very exciting. So they were excited. The wise men, they, or whatever, M Maggie, or whatever you want to call them, whatever they were, um, scientists, whatever, but they came to Jerusalem, they saw the star, they saw something was happening, they did research, and they maybe even knew also here something is happening. And they say uh, to the people that walk around in Jerusalem and go to King Herod and say, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen the, his star in the east and have come to worship. So they come with expectation. And not only that, they, well, they receive some information. 
And, and I just want to read some of the, the prophets here and want to start with Micah because when they asked around, this is what uh, the, 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 the people came up with. When they, when they asked, where, where is he? Where, do you know any information where he, or, where he should have been born? Or, so, so they point them to Micah 5, verse 2, but it, where it says, But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be the ruler in Israel, whose goings forth are from of old, from everlasting. So this is one scripture where uh, the people of Israel have gathered information from and knew a little bit at least what they can expect, what is going on. Somebody who was really expecting something big and actually knew it's going to happen was Simeon. And it's, just, it's a beautiful story. And I want to read it uh, for us in, back in Luke 2, verse 25. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. Okay, that's side note, Holy Spirit. Very interesting. It's already act, he is already active, just a side note, because... We celebrate Pentecost or Shavuot as like the coming of the Holy Spirit, but we see it here and there in Scripture already. So working already among the people, some selected people at least. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. So he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Yeshua, so a few days after his birth, to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed, and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring salvation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people in Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. So Simeon really got... A, a great picture of Yeshua, of the Messiah, of this promise. He, and he was waiting, and he was expecting. Now, over the course of Yeshua's life, and especially over the course of his ministry, there were quite a few people who expected something different from Yeshua. And we went through some scripture already, and um, maybe if you remember, there, there were some descriptions of who this Messiah, who this uh, Yeshua would be, uh, a ruler, a king, a savior. But many were expecting something different, a different Messiah. And I just want to point a few uh, scriptures out to you, and I want to start with his family, because his family actually thought he was a little nuts at some point. Uh, in Mark 3, verse 20, it says, then the multitude, yes, uh, ver chapter 3, verse 20, then the multitude came together again so that they could not so much as eat bread, but when his own people, that's basically his family, when his own people heard about this, they went out to lay hold of him, for they said, he is out of his mind. Okay, so they, they're like, going to take him out of, out of operation. Uh, I'm going to talk to him 
uh, for a little bit. Um, also, uh, another person who needed to double check what is going on uh, was John the Baptist in Matthew 11. He heard all these things happening, the healing, the, the miracles, um, even, even some of the preaching. And John was already in prison. And it says here in, in verse 2, And when John had heard in prison about the works of the Messiah, he sent two of his disciples and said to him, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? So even him as, as uh, the, the, the forerunner, if you will, uh, for, for Yeshua, he's like, at some point, he's like, he hears all these stories and is like, Huh, is that, was that really the guy? Or were we mistaken? Yeshua confirms to him that he is indeed the right person that they were expecting. We could go on. There are more people. Let's, let's give you one more. Uh, in, in John 6, verse 14, uh, for example, uh, was after the feeding of the 5,000. They wanted to make him a king. It says here in, in verse 14, Therefore Yeshua perceived that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king. He departed again to the mountain by himself alone. He realized, oh wow, they're going uh, for something that I'm not here for. So he departed. He, he left the crowd and basically ran away uh, for them to make that. Or if you remember how Yeshua went into, um, into Jerusalem on the donkey. They're shouting. They're laying out uh, pa uh, their, their clothes. They, 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 they cheer him on with uh, palm um, branches. And then a few days later, be be because they were expecting something great, but then a few, a few days later, it's basically the same people who shout out his name uh, for him to be murdered on the cross. Because within those few days they realized, I have a wrong expectation on who this Messiah is. We read Micah 5 verse 2. He's to be the, a ruler and a savior. And I want to go into Isaiah 9, verse 6, and, and take that a little bit apart, because it gives us a description of the, who this Messiah is. And it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful, or Wonderful Counselor, whatever uh, translation you're reading. It's either Wonderful or Wonderful Counselor. A mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And with that expectation, a prophecy that was made about 700 years uh, before the birth of Yeshua, that expectation let people, or that prophecy let people expect something. And as you read this, maybe you have your own idea of what this could mean. And maybe you may be sitting in here and it's like, well, God, really? Are you, or Yeshua, Jesus, are you really that wonderful? Are you the wonderful counselor? Are you, are you a father? I hadn't maybe experienced you that way. Or I'm expecting something different from a father than what you're giving me. Or... Yeshua, are you really a prince of peace? The time we are in, that is far away from being peaceful. And that's where uh, Tolik, uh, on, on Wednesday, he said uh, the sentence, we talked about David, um, and we were in 2 Samuel, and uh, he said a sentence like this, maybe the peace you're expecting is different. And maybe the peace that you're expecting is different than what God has in mind. 
And maybe the God or the, the, the Father, the, the expectation that you have for God as a Father is different than what God has in mind to be an everlasting Father for us. So I want to go a little bit into this. I want to take uh, Isaiah 9, verse 6. Uh, just these four names uh, together apart and just explain a little bit what, what God has in, in mind with that. And it's, it's not going to be complete, but just to give us a, a little bit of an idea of what to look for and what to, to expect. So wonderful counsel. I want to take that together. We're going to be talking about the wonderful and the counselor, but I think he's a wonderful counselor. Wonderful. What does wonderful mean? Sometimes I'm, some maybe even happened with you in a conversation, uh, you're telling me something, and I'm like, oh, wonderful, nice. That's amazing. That's so cool. Okay? So, like, we say wonderful sometimes too, uh, but here the wonderful means something to, something that you can't even comprehend. That's what the wonderful is. Something you, you can't even get a, get a full understanding of it. Being incomprehensible. That is what the Messiah is. Somebody full of wonder. And we can see that throughout Scripture, but hopefully also in your life you can see that. But throughout Scripture, we, we can see how Yeshua is incomprehensible. How he is uh, completely out of this world. We can see this in his teachings. We can see this in his works. Uh, we can see this in uh, what, what God yeah, ordained him to be and to do. We see it in his teachings where he says stuff like, Blessed are those who mourn, rejoice, and be glad in persecution. That is maybe a wonderful that people weren't expecting. It's maybe, again, making sure we're expecting the right thing from God, from Yeshua as well. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Words that come out from from Yeshua, where it's like, huh, I, Yeshua, I was, you know what? I was expecting something else today from you. And that's maybe what the people thought. And that's how some of them at least turned on him. They, they, they were part of his messages and, and listened to it all. And at some point they were like, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, I expected something else from my Messiah. But he is wonderful. He is incomprehensible. And he is a wonderful counselor. What is, what is it, a counselor? What does a counselor do? Well, number one, he, he listens carefully. That's a lot. It's just sitting there. Well, not sitting, but being there. Uh, also, if you want to counsel somebody, you're, you're still, you're... You're listening. You can only counsel uh, if you know what's going on. Um, so listening carefully and giving advice. And this is uh, Yeshua giving, being a wonderful counselor, being an incomprehensible counselor who is there for us and who's guiding his people. Mighty God, El Gibor. Mighty here relates to a king's leadership role. And the original Hebrew uh, adjective actually means having or showing great power and authority or military leadership. That's kind of... Uh, so with, with that context, with that definition, it's like, okay, you're going into... Uh, the revelation, Yeshua is there, Messiah is there. Yes, uh, when you know Isaiah 9, verse 6, this is the idea that you're going into. 
some sort of a military leadership role. And then again, you hear Yeshua's preaching where it's like, okay, uh, when are we defeating our enemies again? Other than just loving on them? When are, when are we getting to the part of defeating? Yeshua comes in as a servant leader. That's kind of the picture we're getting. Comes in as, um, he, he speaks of his kingdom that is not of this world. And that's where we get the picture of Yeshua and the Messiah, where we have to take it in two parts. Where we know at the end, the Messiah will come in great power. And just want to give you some, it, it may even sound scary a little bit, but there's the other picture that we see. We, we look at the Gospels and all these stories, and yes, this is maybe not what people were expecting, but at the end, when his kingdom will come into completion, the military idea comes into play as well where it says in Matthew 24, verse 30, then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And then we flip to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 24. Then comes the end. When he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, when he puts an end to the rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. So he will come in the form of almost like a, what we would picture maybe as a military leader, but at the same time he's also... He is different than what many people would be expecting. And maybe his, his priority right now is still on bringing people into his kingdom. This is where his heart is. Everlasting Father. Habiat. Which is actually a rare description of of a king or a god in the Bible. We don't see the word father too often in the Bible. The Hebrew word uh, for, for everlasting has the idea of being without an end. Actually also being without a beginning. Being without the beginning and being without the end. And whether it was the father of a nation or the father of a family, it is the father's responsibility. It is and it was the father's responsibility to protect and to provide for his children. And this is what God is, this is what Yeshua is doing as well. Providing for his family, providing for his children. And maybe you may be sitting in here and it's like, I pictured that provision somewhat different on all different levels, whatever you're sensing, whatever you're feeling. I pictured that provision maybe a little different. And that can be in, in so many different areas where a father comes into play. Whether, again, uh, when we think of provision, my, my first thought goes into hmm, finances, food, very important, food, but also providing guidance, guidelines, maybe even uh, providing uh, some sort of discipline. That is important as well. Where, where the Messiah is coming into play, where the everlasting Father is coming into play. And I want us to, to 
check ourselves uh, during that time. What is my expectation? Am I on track? Am I in line with God's promises and, and what he is expecting and what he is actually defining the, the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace to be? Or am I out of, of line or is my definition not in sync with the definition of God? Prince of Peace, Sa Shalom. Again, during this time, we may be sitting here and, and think, that's not peace. Whether we are in war right now or, or not, but the world is not at peace. Israel wasn't really at peace before October 7th. Uh, whenever that will be taken off or will be done and in the north and in whatever we're in some sort or in some state of whatever peaceful environment and atmosphere, that doesn't mean that we can say, okay, now we have received peace. Uh, whether it's here in Israel or the world, that is not peace. Same with the, the, the people here uh, that turned on Yeshua. I thought you're going to kick out those Romans. I thought you're going to be the ruler. I thought we we're going to make you the king. And you're going to bring us back into independence and we're going to be this wonderful nation again. At the same time, we will get there. Again, that's what we have to see. Uh, these promises and even these character traits or names and in different stages, we will get there where we get to peace on this earth. But what God has given you is the Holy Spirit who gives you peace. No matter what, and that might be even more important, at least equally important uh, for, for now, but you might be in the craziest times. And I think we all experience that if you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. You might be in the craziest times and still be at peace. And this is what God is giving us. This is what Yeshua is giving us. Peace. Peace in time of trouble. Peace that doesn't make even any sense. The prince of peace. Peace doesn't mean it's going to be easy. Peace doesn't mean easy. That's not a promise of God. I'm going to give you peace. I'm going to make life easy for you. I'm going to simplify everything when you come to me. That's not what it's going to be. That's actually the opposite of what God is promising us because God promised us tribulation uh, when we follow him. God promised us quite the opposite of making it easy. But during that tribulation and, and persecution, we, with the Holy Spirit, can still be at peace. What is your expectation for a wonderful counselor? What is your expectation for the mighty God or everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace? Some people, and, and not just in the Bible, but probably even many people, and, and you may even know some, they have turned away from God. They have turned away from Yeshua. Because they were expecting something different. Their expectation, their own expectation wasn't met because it was a false expectation. And I want us to, as we read through these different scriptures, 
and maybe some of us are celebrating uh, Christmas and I hope as we celebrate it we go through these different scriptures but also if you don't celebrate it this is uh, it is just a wonderful occasion to go back into these scriptures and meditate on them do a little bit of research and see maybe even check with God God is there anything that any expectation that I need to get back in line an expectation that I have to my expectation that I have to surrender to you I want to close with Isaiah 55 verse 8 and 9 And make this a prayer even for us. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God, we come before you, and I pray that you would help us to line up our thoughts our expectations, our understanding, our even definitions of who you are, how Yeshua, how the Messiah is, who he is. I pray that you would help us to, to be better in sync with your definitions, with your thoughts. And God, whatever it is, we're just talking about are Yeshua here in the definition and the expectation of, of him, but there is so much more going on. In general, I pray, God, that you would line up our thoughts with your thoughts. Help us to surrender our own thoughts, our, our hopes, our own expectations. Surrender them to you and make place for your thoughts and your expectations. God, maybe we're in the waiting as well. Number one, yes, we are in the waiting and we're waiting for the return of the Messiah. Maybe we're waiting for, for something in our lives to happen. Maybe we're in the waiting to, to see how you unfold yourself to us. Or how, how the counselor, how the father, the God, the, the prince of peace is coming into play in our lives, God. God, I pray that you would, yeah, give us you, your revelation. That you allow us to to put our trust completely in your into you no matter what we're waiting on no matter what we're hoping for no matter what we we think we can expect god give us your patience give us your your wisdom, but give us your thoughts and guide and lead us. Lord, and during this time, I want to pray that people here in Israel, but also all over the world, where your message is going out to millions, billions of people, Maybe even just in that one week, and if we think about the Western world, and maybe that is the one Sunday or the one Monday where somebody goes to a congregation, to a church. God, we want to pray for those people. And no matter how and no matter what, that people would find you, that people would move their expectations and their thoughts away and make room you. In Yeshua's name, amen. Let's stand and let's close 
with the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face to you and give you his shalom. His peace. Amen. Have a wonderful Shabbat. Shabbat shalom. If you can make it, looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. And if not, we'll see you on Saturday. Saturday, Chase is going to be preaching. Looking forward to it. Bye-bye. <laughs>